Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're gonna go over the Typhoon, some basic settings on your, uh, your first startup on AC. We're getting a lot of questions about this machine, you know, being that it's still pretty new, there's not a whole lot of stuff out there about it. So here we are, gonna make some good videos with the Typhoon so you guys can better understand its features and functions. All right, so today we're on our Typhoon 330. You can see up here at the top, you can scroll through your different processes, AC, DC, TIG, AC, DC, stick. So today we're gonna to be working on AC first startup. So along here at the top of the screen, it'll tell you we're on 240 volts, we're TIG, we're on AC, and we're in manual mode. We do also have our power set mode where you can input your work thickness, your tungsten diameter, your metal type, and your joint type, and the machine will kind of spit out a rough, uh, rough number for you to get started. And you still have some range of adjustment within those uh, predetermined settings. Today we're gonna to be working with the manual mode. So everything comes from the machine pretty much zeroed out. So you roll through all your settings with the knob, you press in, the menu bar will turn red. That means you're selected and then you can adjust. So you can do a fine adjustment like click by click, or you can push in and do a coarse adjustment. So let's just turn this up to 10 seconds. So now we have 10 seconds post flow. Let's scroll back over, we press in, select our pre-flow. We're gonna go to one second pre-flow, press into deselect, start amps. Now we've got our tungsten size on manual mode. So let's go ahead and we'll turn that up to 31. We have our 2T, so we do have the availability to run upslope and downslope. We're gonna bypass that for now. Here's our main amperage. So let's go ahead and we'll turn that up to 200 amps. So now we're on our, our waveform. So the Typhoon has independent waveform control. Right now they're both advanced square. You can actually change these between five different waveforms to really tailor your arc to what you need it for for your project. So right now, We've got them at both advanced square, both are negative and positive. When you click on it and you roll through the waveform, the little shape right here changes to show you what that waveform looks like. So we're gonna run, just for instance today, I'm gonna run advanced square and trapezoid just to show you guys you can separate them. And if you wanna see what the waveforms do, we do have a previous video where I go through how to use the waveforms and where each one uh, will benefit you. So now we're on our AC frequency. So again, we press in, we can go down to 20 Hertz and we can go all the way up to 400 Hertz AC frequency. Today, I'm gonna run it down here at 160. So now we've got our AC balance, bottom out at 5%, up to 70% balance. I'm gonna run my normal 35%. We're not gonna run any downslope, even though we have the 2T selected, we're gonna change this in just a second. Our end amps are at basically a minimum because we have our, our tungsten set to remote, I mean manual. So now to get down to this bottom line, we hit this down button. So now we can select our remote option. So you've got 2T, 2T special, so it's still 2T, but you would click the finger switch and release, and that's, that basically counts it as one click. So then you can release your, your finger switch and it stays running, but it doesn't have the downslope like you would with a, a controllable downslope like you would with 4T. And you also have your 2T finger, that's with uh, using our EV series torch, our, our amperage control torch. Today we're gonna set it up on Pedal. So next we have our tungsten selection. I've got it currently in manual, so I've got full control over my start amperage. Um, when you select the tungsten size, it'll actually adjust your start amps and your ending amperage to fit that tungsten. That way you're not over amping like a 40 amp tungsten or a, an 040 tungsten. You're not running a 120 start amps. You're also not running trying to run three amp start on an eighth inch tungsten because it just won't start that well. So we have some preset uh, start amperage 
based on tungsten size to give you the best performance. All right, so next we have our TIG start. We have our high frequency start, which is your standard. You know, you have an air gap between your tungsten and your workpiece. You hit the pedal, it lights up. We also have lift arc, which is where you would press the tungsten down to your material, hit the finger switch or pedal, and then pull up and the arc starts. Or we also have live lift, so you don't have to use a remote, or you would actually like touch the tungsten to the material, the gas will start, and as you lift, the arc will start. We're gonna leave that on high frequency today. We scroll over next to our amplitude. So this machine also has independent amplitude. So as we turn this on, we're gonna see another box open up here. So now we can deselect, we can go back up. So this is our electrode negative amperage. So we decided to use E in amps as our base amperage. So let's say we have that set to 100 amps. So then your EP amperage is a percentage of your EN. So if you have 100 amps EN, at 10% EP, you're gonna have 10 amps on your EP side. Then if you turn this up to 100%, you're gonna have a balanced amplitude on both sides of your waveform, 100 amps electrode positive and 100 amps electrode negative. We're gonna leave the independent amplitude balanced today. And we also have pulse. So we've got a standard pulse. This is just, you know, your, your high and low balancing between basically two amperages. We also have our advanced AC pulse, which we have a video going over me explaining how you can use advanced AC pulse uh, to weld thicker aluminum than typically your, your amperage output machine would, uh, would handle. So we've got a full video on that as well. We're gonna leave advanced pulse off for now. And we also have a spot timer. So if you're doing some really thin aluminum, you're making a bunch of tacks, you can go through and set up a, a spot timer. You still have your frequency and balance um, available to you, as well as your independent amplitude. But this is the amount of time you're on. So you'd be on for one second with a five second pause between, or you're on for a tenth of a second, I'm sorry with a five second pause between each tack. So you would leave the pedal or finger switch depressed and it would bop, and then you'd have a five second gap between your next, um, your next arc. So if you're doing a bunch of small tacks on thin material, this is something that can come in handy for you. We're gonna go ahead and leave it off today. So now we've got that off. So we've got, just going back through all of our settings, that one second of pre-flow, 31 start amps, we are 100% EP amperage of our EN amps. We're advanced square on both sides of the waveform, 160 hertz, 35% balance with a 10 second post flow. So now I'm gonna show you guys our advanced start menu where you have some, some more start options to really tailor your arc start and our, our fan and cooler controls. The way you access this advanced program menu is you hit the save program and gas purge button at the same time. Now we have our advanced start menu. So we've got our ignition polarity. This really only matters on, on AC. I like a nice clean start, so we're gonna start on EP. That's an electrode positive. Again, you push the button in, or you push the dial in, it'll turn red with what you're selecting and then allow you to adjust it. So here's our ignition amps. So you can go as low as five amps up to 50 amps. And what this is, is it's, it's a spike of amperage before your main start amps actually kick in and it's timed in milliseconds. So I'd happen to run eighth inch tungsten a lot. I like a 50 amp um, setting for my ignition amps. The ignition time is how long your ignition amps are going to run before your main start amps kick in. So this will go all the way up to 400 milliseconds and all the way down to no milliseconds. So. I tend to like it right about the 40 mark. Next, we've got our water cooler control. Right now, I've got it set to auto. We can also turn it on so the cooler runs all the time like our old machines. We can also turn it off if we're just gonna be doing some low amp uh, like DC work. 
Sometimes I'll just turn the cooler completely off if I'm running a, a number nine torch. Obviously, you're going to want to run an air-cooled torch for that. And you've got 10 seconds, so make sure you move a little fast. So we're going to go ahead and turn this back to auto. Now we also have fan control. So we can run the fan on. There we go. Like our old machines, the fan will run all the time. We can also do mode one. That is when the fans turn on, when the inverter temps down here reach uh, 40 degrees Celsius. You can also do mode two and that's fan on arc, which is what I tend to like. So I leave that on mode two. HV spark force. This is how forceful your arc is when it first starts up. So you have a lot of layers of control with your ignition amps, your ignition time, and also how forceful it is. I like a very immediate forceful start. So I run that at 101%. It'll go up to 110 and down to 50. So if you like a, a feathery start, a really nice soft start, going down to 50 is good. Um, a lot of people I've talked to like it in the 80 to 90% range. Again, I like a really, a really hard, immediate start, so I like to run it at 100%. And then you've got your inverter temps. You can't select these, but it's just a data point, so you can see what your inverter temp is. <clears throat> so now we'll wait for us to go back to the main screen. So now we're at our main setting. So we've got everything set up on our main screen. We've got our advanced programming set up. So now we're pretty much ready to run. One thing I do like to do at the start of the day is go ahead and purge my gas line just to make sure I don't have any, you know, um, atmosphere in my gas line. So I will go ahead and purge it. Now, if you want to save this programming, hit your save program button. You can see I've already got a couple saved here. But let's scroll down. Let's scroll down here to this last one. So we're going to go ahead and press and hold. And you can see the title changed. So that tells me what these settings are. So now I know I have my current settings saved down here. I can also hit the gas purge button that brings up this padlock. That means these settings are now locked. So even if I go to these settings on my main screen, if I adjust anything, if I adjust anything and I go back to this setting, it doesn't save it on the, the menu. So you can't overwrite that programming without going back and unlocking it first. So it's really nice for guys that are doing code work where you have to work under a certain WPS. You can set in those settings, you can lock them, and then someone actually has to take some real effort in order to unlock and change that programming. All right, so that was just a quick run through of the advanced start menu and your main menu on the AC side of the Typhoon. Um, while we were running the 330 today, the menu is exactly the same on the 230, 330, and the, the soon to come 500. Um, so if you guys have any other questions um, about the menu or what things do, of course we're gonna be making more content with the Typhoon soon, going like a deeper dive into those features. But always feel free to leave a comment with a question. Send me a, a DM on Instagram, Facebook. Um, I'm the moderator on the, the, Insta, the Instagram page and the Facebook page. So um, always feel free to leave me a message with a question. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, you can also send me an email. Uh, my email address is jesse, J-E-S-S-E, -E, at everlastwelders.com. You can also get a hold of me by calling into the main office and dialing extension 223 if you have a question. So always feel free to reach out to me. More than happy to help you guys out. We will see you soon with more content.